There were two more murders 15 miles away. When police arrived, they found the telephones and electricity lines. We have a weird homicide. A scene described by one investigator as reminiscent of a weird... Cup of murder. We may never know what makes a man snap. What happens in that one moment that makes a hardworking man become deadly. On May 19, 1992, a man lost his temper and with his rage went the lives of six of his family members, leaving his granddaughter very much so alone. So if you like your coffee hot but your bones chilled, sit back and start your day with a morning cup of murder. On May 19, 1992, a woman living in Pukekohe, Auckland, was hanging her laundry when she heard the deafening sound of three gunshots, followed by horrific screaming coming from her neighbor's home. Terrified, she ran around the front of her house so she could see what was happening, only to hear two more shots, more screaming, and deep groans. Something was very wrong inside of her neighbor's, the Schlepfer's, home. Simultaneously, a phone call came into police, believed to be from one of the women in the Schlepfer home. The operator heard the sounds of panic before a deadly quiet as about 20 armed officers made their way to the scene of the apparent shooting. Then the operator heard a calm voice come across the line. The tiny voice of a young girl said, I think he's going to shoot me. And my granddad has shot my brother and I think he's going to shoot me. The voice was nine-year-old Linda, who, as investigators would soon find out, had picked up the phone after her mother Hazel had made the original call before being shot to death inside of the home. She said all of this and calmly relayed what she could to the 111 operator, while the mangled bodies of her mother and brother lie nearby. According to the young girl, who remarkably gave all of the details to officials, this is what happened inside of the house. She was lying in bed when she heard the sound of gunshots and ran to hide under her bed. That's when she heard her grandfather come into the room and call out her name. Her mother still screaming in the background. He then left the room and had a heated argument with Hazel before a second round of gunshots rang out, and her grandfather, Brian, went outside. Linda then ran into her 11-year-old brother Aaron's room across the hall and saw him lying on his back, clutching a gunshot wound on his chest. When she went into the dining room, she found the phone hanging from the receiver and picked it up. The phone call with police would last three hours. Three hours of terror, three hours of bloodshed, and three hours of a standoff where an incredibly brave young girl stood inside of the home where her grandfather had just killed her entire family. A man who was outside calling for her. The constable on the other line tried to keep Linda as calm as he could, as she barricaded herself safely inside of the home. He spoke with her about school, her interests, movies, and music. And when she worried about her three cats who had not had breakfast, he assured her that the officers coming to save her would feed them. Eventually, the officers did arrive, and, with a decided-upon code word, alerted Linda that the whole ordeal was done. That they had found the gunman, and he was no longer a threat. That she was safe. Brian Schlepfer, a 64-year-old wealthy farmer, had shot or stabbed all six members of his family before taking his own life on his farm. Those dead were his 55-year-old wife, Jocelyn, his three sons, Peter Wayne, 39, Carl Percival, 33, and Daryl Bryan, 31, Peter's wife, Hazel Jean, 42, and their son, Aaron, just 11 years old. Linda Schlepfer was the sole survivor inside of the home that day. She and her sister, Carrie, just 14 and staying with a friend the day of the massacre, were now orphans. So what happened to make Brian snap? From what police could surmise, Brian, whose family had long settled in the area and whose name garnered a certain amount of respect locally, had been suffering from depression that he refused to seek treatment from. Because of this, the family started to worry that the once hardworking farmer wouldn't be able to continue running the business, causing a power struggle between him and his children. More specifically, the eldest son, Peter, and his wife, Hazel. That, on the morning of May 19th, he and his wife, Jocelyn, were having a heated dispute. The topic unknown, and the idea of the family taking over and him becoming obsolete, was all just too much. He stabbed Jocelyn with a nearby kitchen knife, grabbed his gun, and began the massacre. Though, given the murders and suicide, all of this is pure speculation. In the end, Brian was buried next to the six family members he killed, and Linda attended the seven-person funeral, standing there silently without shedding a tear. Thank you for joining me in my morning cup of murder. Please join me again tomorrow to hear what terrible thing happened on May 20th. Don't forget to rate and subscribe and let me know how you like it. If you want to help support the podcast, there's always Patreon or just sharing it with your true crime obsessed friends. And remember, stay safe. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. What interferes with your happiness? What are some things standing in the way of being the best version of you? For a lot of people, life, your past, and sometimes your current situation can cause roadblocks in your life. Mental health is incredibly important, and so many, including myself, can benefit from talking to a professional and working to dismantle those roadblocks. That's why I'm excited to talk to you guys about BetterHelp. BetterHelp knows no two people are the same and will help to assess your personal needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. These incredibly convenient appointments are in a safe and completely private online environment, and you can start chatting with your new therapist in under 24 hours. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling. 
You can message with your counselor at any time and get a timely response, plus schedule weekly video or phone sessions, which means no driving to an office, no waiting rooms, and no awkward small talk. Just meaningful sessions with experts who specialize in things like depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, trauma, family conflict, LGBTQ matters, grief, and so much more. There is truly someone there for everyone. And BetterHelp is committed to finding your perfect match. Which means if you and your counselor don't mesh for whatever reason, they make it easy and free to seek someone new if needed. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling. And with financial aid available and access worldwide, they truly make it easy for anyone to seek the help they need. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash morning cup. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. 